Okay, good morning everybody. Um, so, the, the, so the first thing uh, is, it, it is like a spring day out there, so um, it's not exactly a chilly day, but that's okay, you can still, uh, any day is a chilly day, that's right, I should know that, I should know that. So, uh, so for those of you uh, who I haven't met, which I think I've met you all, but if I haven't, um, and for those at home, um, I'm Dave, this is my company's Therapy Gardens, and um, luckily uh, I come to Whitman roughly once a month and we, uh, we've done some different things. We did festive soups last month, I think, um, and then uh, we're going to do chili and chowder, uh, chili and stews today, excuse me, I now have chowder on the brain because we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, really yeah. So, um, so, you know, if you're, if you're not familiar with our company, uh, Therapy Gardens is, um, we work with um, senior centers, with libraries, with over 55 communities, and um, garden clubs, uh, women's groups, things like that. And we just do a, a variety of workshops on gardening, cooking, uh, healthy living, uh, cultural interests, hobbies, things like that. So um, you can see this one here was pickles. I, we did that one here. We did that one recently here, I think, with the, uh, we made some pickles. So anyway, today we're here, we're gonna talk about chili and stew. Um, you know, one of the things is, you know, I, sometimes people have different, different definitions of things in their mind of what they are. So I kind of like to let people know what I'm thinking when I say things, because there are some terms that we use, you know, back and forth, um, you know, chowder, stew, some, you know, something like that. Um, so I like to just say, you know, right off the bat, when I'm talking about chili, I'm talking about meat with some type of pepper simmered in some type of a savory sauce. And the some type is, that's where it really is. You know, the meat and the peppers, that's pretty standard. And then the savory sauce is your little kind of additions and things that you do. So today I'm gonna to show you how I do some of them. Um, and then stew is basically just a chunky soup with a, with a thicker um, broth. Uh, obviously both are delicious and these are their stories. This was, <laughs> I was thinking of that law and order. Uh, Remember that? that show? I love that yeah. show. Yeah. Actually, it's still on, I think. It's, Is it? It's still, it's still going? Yeah, I love yeah. that show. Um, so, you know, and the thing with stew is you can, and, and really anything, you can, you can thicken things with flour, you can thicken things with, um, by just blending a, a portion of it. There's all different ways of doing things. So we'll talk about some of those today. Um, so the first one, and this is what you just had, what you just sampled. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so this is, this is my recipe for chili. Um, you can use beef, chicken, pork, venison, or whatever you want with it. Um, it comes, uh, chili con carne means chili with meat. So that's that con carne is with meat. Our dark red kidney beans are the most, that's what I used here. Um, but you can use any kind of bean you want, really. You could use, uh, you could use cannellini beans, you could use black beans. Um, some chilies different, like sweeter chilies often call for black beans as opposed to kidney beans. Um, you usually use some type of a tomato sauce and a broth mixture. Although uh, pre-pandemic, I went to the, uh, the chili chowder fest that's around here. What, which one is it at? The, the, um, it's in Bridgewater, I think. East Bridgewater. East Bridgewater, yeah. The, is it the commercial club? It's at the Commercial Club in East Bridgewater. That's it. Thank you. Um, and like I said, this is pre-pandemic, but I'll tell you, if you're a chili person, that's the place to go. It's a little hard. They do it. It's kind of hot sometimes. They do it in the middle of the summer. But um, it's uh, really all these different chili vendors there. And I really got a, some different ideas going there. And some don't use tomato sauce, believe it or not. Um, and it can be spicy or mild. And basically, you can use any kind of pepper with chili. One of the things that I've come around to doing with, with my, yeah, go ahead. Can I ask you this? Yeah. Uh, you said some don't use tomato sauce. Yeah. What would they use in place of tomato Some use just, just a beef broth. Uh, some do, like I said, they, they blend the vegetable a little bit more. Some will, you know, you just, whatever, whatever kind of liquid they want to use. I've seen chili with beer, you know, which I'm sure is delicious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and, and as far as the spicy and mild thing, I'm not one of those people that I'm like, oh, you know, I, I love the hot, spicy stuff. You know, I, if it enhances the food, great. 
if it burns my mouth off my face, you know, I'm not really that interested in it. So one of the things that I've kind of come around to with when I make my chili is I make it the way you, you just had it, which is mild. And then if I'm having people over or something like, or I'm bringing it somewhere, I'll bring some hot sauce or something on the side and then the people want to doctor it up and make it hot. Because I, I the older I got, the more I, I, less and less people in my circle like it hot and they like it a little more mild. But there's always that one person that's like, ah, oh, it's not hot enough. So there you go, knock yourself out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally, right, yeah, literally. Um, so since we're speaking of, of peppers, um, and I do, I just want to kind of put a little disclaimer there uh, on the lower right. Um, although quite charming, Dave is neither a doctor or a nutritionist, but I do read reputable publications and I'm happy to share any sources and things with you of where I, um, get some things and one of the things that they really have been uh, researching is the benefits of hot peppers and the, that um, cap capiscum I always say it wrong capsaicin, capsaicin yeah. you know how, however you say it um, you know I've, I've heard it said a, a bunch of different ways um, it is very good for you and um, it's something that if you can get into your diet regularly it's a good thing so some of the things that you know they're they're talking about, they're researching, they're studying. I would take a lot of this with a grain of salt. Although, as long as like for example, if you decide you want to eat hot sauce, like hot sauce counts, you would get the same benefits out of the hot sauce. The only thing is salt and sugar. So you want to kind of think about that. If you don't have the salt and the sugar with it, and you just have the hot peppers, there's no downside to adding them to your diet. But you can just see some of the things that they've um, been looking at and. and believe that hot peppers help with digestive uh, issues, um, promoting healthy heart, migraines, joint pain, uh, metabolism and promoting weight loss. That one's being studied and has been studied for quite a while and um, there's a lot to that. Um, psoriasis, there's some studies that they're actually putting some of the hot stuff right on people's skin. Uh, they're also doing that with like cinnamon um, I don't know if you've read about that, but there's supposed to be a, a, some reactions that are taking place. Um, reductions for cancer risks, uh, fighting flu and colds and fungal affections, bad breath and allergies. So those are all things that, you know, we, we've kind of uh, talked about with peppers. And it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be smart to talk about peppers without understanding the heat of, of peppers. Um, so for example, actually in this, the chili that you had, all I have is chili powder. I don't actually have any cut up peppers or anything in there. I don't, I, I tend not to do that, but some people do. Um, so this just gives you an idea of how things are. So bell peppers have no heat at all. You know, pimento, whatever. You look here like jalapeno. I've heard people, oh, jalapenos are so hot. Well, look how far down on the scale they are compared to how far you can get. But in my opinion, you know, in here, you know, you're gonna maybe get me up to about Thai, you know, and that's, to me, that's enough. That's enough spice to, to enhance the dish, not to overwhelm it. When you start to get up in here, you know, with the ghost reaper or whatever they call it, um, you know, that's a bit much for me. I don't know about you guys. Um, you know, one of the things I always like to do is when we make things at home, is I like to just kind of compare to what you might buy in the store. And it's, it's actually, um, at first, you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's not too bad. Um, but that one can is four and a half servings. So, the <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so now, take a look at those numbers at times four, you know, and you get the idea. I don't even know why that's legal, to be honest with you. I can't, I, I don't know, four and a half servings out of one can of chili. It just makes no sense to me. But anyway, you know, so that's chili. Let's talk a little bit about stew. Stew. Um, is uh, obviously a chunky soup with a thicker broth. You can use any protein you want. Uh, I think beef stew is probably the most popular. Um, and then, you know, we talked briefly the different techniques for thickening. You can use cream, you can make a roux, a slurry, blending, or potato flakes. And there's others too. These are just the major ones. So just quickly, cream, obviously, you know, you just mix the cream in. Um, a roux is just equal parts butter and flour. So that's all a roux is. So if you took uh, a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of flour and just kind of whisk them together and then put that in and whisk it in, that would thicken it right up. 
What a lot of restaurants do is they make a big batch of a roux and then they freeze it. And then when they want some, they just cut a chunk off and throw it right in the stew, which, which makes a lot of, kind of like I do with the salt pork. Um, Mary and I were talking earlier about salt pork and clam chowder. You know, when you buy salt pork, they sell you a big hunk like this and you only need a little bit. So I just freeze it and it's easy to pull out and just cut some off. Um, and then a slurry is cornstarch and water. That's what a slurry is. So a slurry is, you would see that in, some places use it for a clam chowder. Um, in New England, I think that's probably a no-no, but it is, some places do do that. Um, but you see it most often in Chinese restaurants. And, yeah. I use it all the time. I, do I, you? My stepmother was a very good cook. Yeah. That's, she never did a roux. She ne always did a slurry. And, yeah, yeah. And I really would like to try a roux, but I, almost I'm afraid. I know what to expect with the slurry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, sample. just you add more if it's not thick enough? Right, yep. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, just play around with it. That's what I do. You know, some things I do, and I, I think it's going to be great, and they're terrible, and some things I do, uh, like on a whim, and I'm like, oh, wow, I better remember how I did that, you know? <laughs> so so it's just it's trial and error sometimes. But um, but the slurry gives it, and I, I think you'll agree, like a silkiness almost. And that, so when you think of like a lot of the Chinese, the brown sauces and things like that, they have a, that's a slurry that they use. Um, and a slurry is a mixture of what again? It's cornstarch and water. water. Equal parts, cornstarch okay. and water. I find it, the hotter the water, the better off. Okay. Uh, yep. It dissolves quicker. Okay, yeah. Try it with cold, it doesn't work. Okay, so the hotter the water, the better. Yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a great tip. Um, yeah, wonderful. And then, of course, you can blend. I use just, I have a stick blender, you know, one of those hand ones. And I just, if I want to thicken something up without any, you know, added stuff, I'll just put that in there for a couple little buzzes and that's it. If you don't have one of those, just take about a third of the soup out and put it in a regular blender and then pop it back in. Um, and potato flakes. This is, this is one, um, I've heard people use oatmeal too, but I, I find that oatmeal is a little dry. Um, a little sandpapery sometimes, but the potato flakes um, are re a really nice thickener in some things too. So if you ever have like you know instant potatoes laying around or something, um, that can work. So here's uh, here's Dinty Moore, um, you know, and and again it's just this is two and a half servings. Um, this is actually a little bit of a different can than this. I don't want to be disingenuous. <laughs> um, for some reason, when you some, some things you can save on the internet and some you can't, so you know I just assume there's a reason that I can't save them and don't bother with it. But um, but you can see you know the the fat is uh, you know the uh, fat the cholesterol 30 milligrams sodium 41 percent of your sodium for the day in half that can. So if you would eat that whole can, that's you know 80 plus percent of your sodium for the day. Wow. Let's talk about making better stuff that that we can make at home and, and how we do it. Okay. So this is the, the recipe for the meat-based chili. Um, and it's, this is essentially what you had today. Um, and if you want, I can, uh, obviously I'm always happy to email these out to you, um, but you're more than welcome to take a picture. And I always email it to Mary when I'm done. And then Mary can print something out for you if there's a particular recipe that you want. But um, so this is the one, like I said, that you had today. Um, I used one pound of ground beef and I used one pound of ground pork, two cans of dark red kidney beans, and then I always use unsalted diced tomatoes. That's key. Whenever you're layering things in, get the unsalted stuff, you know, and add the salt at the end. Um, Tablespoon of minced garlic. I, I don't think I even put that this time. I think I used garlic powder this time. Um, and to me, they're almost interchangeable. The, you're really just looking for that sweetness flavor that comes from the garlic. You don't necessarily need the actual pieces of garlic. Um, and then I always put a little tablespoon of, of Worcestershire. Um, you know, sometimes a couple more shakes than before. Um, and then for spices, uh, I use oregano. I sometimes use red pepper. I didn't this time. There was no red pepper this time. Um, cumin, chili powder, and then I just get a little can of tomato sauce. 
just I get the small one and I just add a little bit at a time. And then when I refrigerate it overnight, I actually save whatever's left of the tomato sauce. And sometimes it's a little thick the next day, so I add a little bit more of that. Um, and then beef stock, I just basically say to cover, it's usually about four cups of beef stock. Um, oh, the olive oil is a little typo there. Um, the olive oil, I just, I always add a little bit of olive oil before I brown the beef um, and the pork, mainly because the pork is a little dry. Um, and then I throw a uh, diced onion in there, a couple sprigs of thyme, and then salt and pepper to taste. And then that's it. I just, I brown the meat, then throw everything in together. If you, uh, if you use 80-20 beef, you probably want to drain it a little bit before or else, you know, it'll be really high in fat content. Uh, if you use 90-10, it's not, it's not as bad. Um, and then all I do is I just, I make it, I, I, um, I bring it up to a boil, I let it simmer for about half an hour, 40 minutes. Then I taste it for seasonings. And then I add if I need a little more cumin or a little more, usually I need a little more chili powder and a little more salt. Um, and for beef stock, I actually have been using, I think we talked about it last time I was here, the uh, Better Than Bullion, the beef base, those things. And I just, just use that, I just add, I take a, four cups of water and one teaspoon of that per the four cups. I mix that in a separate measuring cup and then I just add it slowly as I need it because I, I don't want it to get soupy, you know. So, and that's, that's it. That's how, I, that's how I made that chili right there. But like I said, the whole cook time is about 45 minutes. It does taste better the next day. So this particular chili I did make last night. So anything that's basically a one pot meal pretty much tastes better the next day. I think you would agree. You know, even spaghetti sauce, any of that stuff. Um, so if you wanted to do a vegetarian chili, um, that's something I get a lot of um, um, requests for. This one is really good. And the key to this one is um, right here, fire roasted tomato, can of fire roasted tomatoes. Um, the first time I did, sometimes I bring this one as a, as a sample instead of the beef chili. Um, the, and the first time I brought this one, I asked them, I said, what's, what's in it? Because they kept saying, what does that taste? And I said, you tell me, what is it? And no one could guess that it was the fire roasted tomatoes. So it's a really nice flavor. Um, and again, I pretty much use the same spices um, for this to keep it vegetarian. It's far cheaper to just buy some box vegetarian stock than, to, than it is to make your own because, you know, produce is so expensive. Um, so I just, um, I just get a, a boxed one, you know, whatever, whatever one is there. Um, and then I use the three different kinds of beans. I think that's kind of cool. And uh, the black beans just add a little bit of kind of contrast in there. So that's a really nice chili. Um, so this is one that I do uh, very similar to the one you had. It's almost the exact same thing, except I do two things different. I add a little bit of dark beer, and I take four red bliss potatoes. And what I do, this one I make, um, I actually, first I brown everything, but then I put it all in a crock pot. So I actually should call this one crock pot chili uh, for me. And then what I do is I assemble it all in the crock pot, just like I normally would, except I take the, the red bliss potatoes and cut them in half and brown them. Just br put them flat side down and just brown them in a pan. You could do it in the oven if you wanted to, with a little butter or olive oil. Then I take the halves, or even wedges I do sometimes, and I submerge them in the chili in the crock pot. And then I cover it and I don't touch it. I don't leave it there. And then when I serve it, I just make sure everyone gets like one piece of potato, and some chili with it and a little sour cream on the side and it's fantastic. That, that's one I make for like, if I'm having people over for like a Patriots game or something like that and people really like that one. Um, and the dark beer, I just, I add in uh, as I'm browning like the onion and the meat or something like that and you wanna let that go for a little bit because you wanna burn the alcohol uh, off so you don't really taste it, you know. But, and of course I use Sam Adams beer because, you know, here in New England, right? <laughs> um, you know, these people are getting all kinds of free advertising out of us, right? We're here, we're talking about their products, we're, we're going to be on Whitman Cable. They, they better start writing a check to the Whitman Senior Center, I think, huh? So, um, white chicken chili, this is a really nice one. If anyone wants this, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, send this one to you as well. This is, um, I made this one 
pro a couple weeks ago. Um, real nice. The you know the trick to this one is the um, the boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I think work best. You can use thighs. A lot of people use chicken thighs, but I find they're a little too fatty. And then the next day, there's a there's the kind of it's kind of greasy, you know, especially for a white for a white chili. Um, and you chop up a little bit of fresh chili in there, and the lime and the cilantro really give it a nice kind of a southwestern flair. I don't know if people like cilantro. How many people don't like cilantro? Anyone? Yeah. There's always a few that just don't. <laughs> does it taste like soap or something to you? Or yeah. There's always a few people that it, that taste funny to. Um, it took me a while to actually like it. Um, here's a kind of a take on. We did the chili. Uh, here's. Here's a take on the uh, Boston beef stew. So if you wanted to do a Boston beef stew, you would use Sam Adams beer, obviously. Um, I have it right there, half a cup. And for this, all I do is I brown the, um, you brown the meat, same thing, same exact thing. You just brown, you just get stew beef, or you can get chuck and just cut it up yourself if you want to save a little bit of money. Um, and then just brown it. And then that's it. And you can add whatever you want. I, I like to add turnips. Sometimes I add parsnips and different things like that that uh, make people, oh, wow, what's that? That's, you know, that kind of caught me off guard. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are great. Um, one of the things I found with, with sweet potatoes, and even sometimes I use a little butternut squash, is I'll put them in a little later on in the cooking yeah. process so they stay a little firmer. Um, you know, you just have to experiment around with that. But this is a really good recipe um, for that. All right. And like I said, you know, I don't need to go through every single line here. But here's one for vegetarians. This one is really good if you use uh, mushroom stock, which um, I do. I have a recipe. The next slide is a recipe for mushroom stock. And this is, I actually, um, my ex-wife, I think I mentioned became a vegetarian. Um, that's not why we got divorced. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, well, maybe, no. Uh, but she became a vegetarian um, after we were married. And, um, and at first, I was, a little, I was a little mad. I was like, oh, that's kind of a bait and switch thing. But you know what? It, it pushed me to do some different things and try different things. And one of them was this mushroom stock, which I really, really liked. Um, and it's it's may, it's great for a, a vegetarian beef stew or something like that. And the key to that, everything else is all the same. The protein is tofu, but the key is you have to get firm tofu. It, I've done this. I've I have got the softer tofu, and it just melted, and then you just have this big mess. It's just, it was awful. I ended up throwing it away, which is very rare. Um, even I wouldn't even give that to the dog. Um, but if you use firm tofu, just brown it like you would brown the meat first, and then it will stay intact. Um, and it's really, it's not bad. It really isn't, uh, sounds gross, but. And this is, this is the mushroom stock. And then the big thing here for the mushrooms, you can use any kind of mushrooms that you want. Um, but the big change, you know, all the other stuff is the, is the same. Onion, celery, you know, garlic, uh, bay leaf, etc. Right here, this one tablespoon each of soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and fish sauce. Now, does anyone here cook with fish sauce at all? No? You're missing out. Fish sauce is a, has anyone never had fish sauce? Yeah. You might have, you probably have and not known it in a restaurant or something, but fish sauce is just, it's just concept, they just take um, anchovies, is it anchovy or sardines? Sardines, I think. I can't remember which one it is. But they take all these fish and they salt them and then they just press it. And the, the, the juice that comes out is, is fish sauce. It's very salty and a little tiny bit goes a long way, but it really adds a, a lot of flavor. Um, and again, it's a lot of Asian cooking, but you do find it in a lot of Italian cooking. Um, occasionally they'll put a drop of it in a red sauce or something. Do they so, eat that in Chinese food too? Oh yes, very, very, very big in Chinese food. Um, it's uh, Vietnamese food. It's big. If you like the, uh, the big Vietnamese noodle soup dishes and things, they, they put it in that. Um, so, and again, if you don't like it, if you decide, by the way, when you, if you do experiment with it, it smells awful. But it's just, just be warned right now. It's, it's horrible. 
but it doesn't you, it doesn't affect the dish and you don't smell it once it's in there cooking you know and again just start off with a very little bit but it does add a lot of flavor but if it's not to your taste don't add it it does, you know I, I thought it had gone bad it was so smelly yeah we went two house lots over and dumped it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah oh it was bad yeah it, it, it's very it's really strong it, you know what it reminds me of in the summer when I garden I buy fish emulsion and I mix that like seaweed and fish emulsion and I mix that with water and water the plants and every neighborhood cat is around my <laughs> my tomato plants for the next couple days that's what it reminds me of um, so one of the things that I, I kind of like to do is um, and I've been doing this with a, most of my food related ones is it's all well and good to say you know let's make a homemade stock that takes two days but everyone knows we don't always have two days and there are tips and tricks and shortcuts and things like that that you can kind of take along the way. So I always add these in. Um, when we get to the products part, um, I don't endorse anyone in particular. I don't take any money from anybody, you know, not that they would want to give me any anyway, but um, I just, I buy what I like and, and I just, I do so much cooking and because I do so much of this, that I figure, you know what, I'll just tack it on to some of these and people seem to enjoy it. So um, here, you know, these are some of the things that I do for, um, for tip, for um, tips. So um, brown meat and salt pork versus oil for more flavor, but it is gonna add some cholesterol. You know, you, you do need to know that. Um, I always use a 50% mixture of ground beef and something else with my chili. Very rarely do I do just beef. Um, the best one that I've ever made is venison. So if you know anyone that is a hunter or if you can get ground venison, which you can get them at specialty places, it really lends itself to chili. It's, I was surprised at how well it works out um, to the point where people I've given it to have been like, oh my God, this is the best chili you've ever made. And it's the exact same recipe. It's just sub I substitute the venison for the, the pork. Um, always add your spices in small amounts and taste as you go, that way you don't overwhelm yourself. Uh, I see a couple of heads nodding that uh, been there, done that. We all have. I did that yesterday with did, the cayenne pepper. Did you? Too much cayenne? Yeah, yeah. I thought it looked really good, and then all of a sudden when I tasted it. Yep, <laughs> yep, you knew it was there. Yeah, yeah. You put it in, yeah, you, yeah, you, gotta, you can't take it out, right? You can't take it out. You gotta find yeah. something to cut it with, you know, like you said, sour cream or something like that. But, oh yeah, we've, we've all done that, yeah. I think my daughter's going to make chili this weekend. She just doesn't know it yet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, if you really want to, well, per, there you go. Perfect with that. We were just talking about cayenne pepper. If you want to increase spiciness of something quickly, the, there's really no quicker way to do it than cayenne pepper. And again, just use a little bit. Be careful um, if you do use a pinch. And then rub your eye. Don't do that, you know, because you'll burn your eyes. So um, wash your hands if you if you handle cayenne pepper or wear gloves. And you can also put a little of your favorite hot sauce in there. Um, just keep in mind there's you know there's sodium and some hot sauce like sriracha has sugar. Sriracha actually has two kinds of sugar. It has brown sugar and white sugar. I don't know if you know that. Which I and I love sriracha. Um, and if you want to reduce spice. You can always, you can add sour cream, you can add additional liquid, and potatoes actually help. You could actually um, take a potato, peel it, cut it in half, put that in, and let it, you know, keep it with your dish, and then just fish it out and throw it away later on. And that will uh, reduce some of the uh, spiciness and saltiness. I have a tip I just thought of. It yeah. Nothing to do with chili. Okay. Um, for people that like celery, and it goes bad pretty quickly. Yeah. Just cut it and put a potato in with it. It'll keep it crisp. Really? A potato in with celery will keep well, it crisp. Peel okay. The potato, okay. But a high end, you could do chunks or whatever. Oh, all right. But put it in with the water that mm -hmm. you've got the celery in it. It'll keep it crisp. Oh, very cool. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a good tip. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're filled with tips today. So beef stew tips. Um, buy chuck roast and cut it yourself to save, save money, you know, because they, they jack up the prices. I mean, I can't believe what the prices are lately anyway, but, um, so I, I'm always, if I have time, I try to buy, I think I've mentioned that in, in workshops in the past, the less that your food has been touched, 
by either a person or a machine, the better it is for you, the wholer it is for you. So for example, you know, bag shredded lettuce is, yeah, very convenient, but it's been in a machine or someone has touched it along the way, so it opens up the door for more contamin contamination, whereas, you know, uh, a, a head of lettuce, just a head of iceberg lettuce, it's all inside there, you know, so you throw away the outside leaves, wash the rest of it, you know, it's le less chance of being contaminated. Same thing with, with, with stew beef. If you buy a piece of chuck, less, it's been touched less than cut up into stew beef at the, rest, at the um, um, supermarket. Um, good meat makes good stew. That's a really, really important statement. It sounds really simple, but it's true. And I hate to say it because it's my favorite grocery store, Market Basket, but I, I bought some you know cheaper cuts of, of it was actually um, stew beef there once and I'll never do it again uh, I'll always go for the higher quality beef um, it really really makes a difference particularly in in a beef stew where beef I mean it's beef that that's the star of the thing you know so you don't want a stringy um, piece of beef that ha it doesn't have flavor um, chicken broth often works better than beef stock as a matter of fact when I, when I make beef stew, I use chicken broth. And same thing when I make French onion soup, I use chicken broth. And no one has ever noticed. Got a recipe for the French onion soup I'm looking for. I do have one. I do okay, have great. one. Yeah, I'll give you one. Yeah. Um, it's, I, it's basically, you just do the, you know, brown the onions in brown sugar and butter, right? Brown sugar. Brown sugar. Brown that, that's the key sugar. right there. Okay. Brown sugar and butter. And then chicken, chicken stock, uh, deglaze with a little bit of, uh, you can use sherry wine, red wine, doesn't matter. That's it. That's all I do. Um, and then beef stock. Um, uh, chicken stock, rather. Uh, seasoned meat before dredging in flour. So that's one thing. A lot of people will put the seasoning in with the flour and mix it together. I don't think that works as well. I think if you season, particularly if you're going to do salt and pepper. So for beef stew, it's really important yeah, to salt. Guy. Yeah, you got to salt that meat first because it's... You know, it's gonna. You're gonna notice it in the end. I salted it and I peppered it and I forgot the flour. Oh, you forgot the flour. Okay, well, that's okay. That's all right. Um, yeah. So then, just dredge it in flour. And how I've been doing it in flour because I find every time I work with flour, it's all over me. It's all over the kitchen. It's no matter what. Uh, I'm like that that kid on peanuts that the cloud of dust falls around. I'm like that with flour. Um, that's probably why I forgot it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I use a I use a paper lunch bag. And I put the flour in the paper lunch bag, and then I put the, the beef in there and shake it, and then I just take the beef out and throw the bag away. That's you know? Great. Yeah, yeah. I think I stole that one from Rachel Ray. I, I swipe a lot of her ideas. <laughs> She's got some good ones. Um, I use a variety of root vegetables to, to do a couple things. It increases, it's a really great way of thickening a stew without using a thickening agent. It's just adding more stuff, particularly vegetables. Um, and to increase the nutrition. You know, because one of the things we know is you want to eat a, a colorful variety of vegetables. So, you know, if you just have potatoes and beef, that's not very colorful, you know. But you, like I said, we talked earlier, you add carrots, you can add um, turnip, you can add parsnip. All right, some thickening tips. Um, a roux, we already talked about this, but here it is if uh, you're a visual person and need to see it. Um, you know, blending a portion, cream, potato flakes. I like that picture. So here, this I find, uh, people seem to find very helpful. So that is the chili. And the only thing that I did not use, oh no, this is, sorry, this is the vegetarian chili, excuse me. This is the vegetarian chili with the fire roasted tomato, see it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why the, the pork is there, but um, yeah, I was probably doing both of them. So hopefully I have another one. But uh, yeah, that's the vegetarian chili with the different kinds of beans and all the different vegetables. Yeah, so that's the vegetarian chili. And this is some infused um, chili olive oil that you can just, you can get it at a stop and shop. It's um, nothing fancy. And I just saute the onions in that a little bit. And I did that with the vegetarian one. I didn't do it with the beef one. Um, I figured the vegetarian, you want to give it a little more flavor. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's that. Let's make sure everyone got their picture. 
Um, these are some, some things that I use uh, regularly in the cabinet. Um, liquid smoke is really, I, ha I haven't used it in any of the, uh, the chilies lately, but I think in, you could put it in any one of them. Has anyone ever used liquid smoke? You just use a, like a tiny bit, just a cap full. And it just gives a, a nice smoky flavor. And it's cheap. It's like $1.50 or something at uh, Stop and Shop. That's the chili oil. I prefer um, Texas Pete hot sauce. It's, um, it's one of the few that's it's just it's peppers, vinegar, and salt. That's it. Um, there's not, not, nothing much else in there, whereas a lot of them have all kinds of additives and things like that. So I, I like the Texas Pete. And it's mild. And then the last one, have you guys heard of pick a pepper sauce? Okay, so no one's heard of this. And let me tell you how I found this. I was at a party one night years and years and years ago, and there was this dip, and I and it was a kind of a weird color. It was like a brown color, but it was delicious. And I said to the, the woman, uh, I said, what is this dip? And she said, oh, it's cream cheese and pick a pepper. And I said, what's a pick a pepper? <laughs> Never heard of it. It's... You could think of it like Jamaica's version of A1, okay? But the ingredients, first of all, it's, it's completely natural for you. So there's no, look at the sodium. There's only 50 milligrams of sodium. Um, there's, you know, almost no fat. There's nothing to it. And it's made with, it's raisins. If you look at the front, it has, uh, I, I cut it off, but all the ingredients are right down there. And it's got like raisins and apricots, and it's just all made out of um, things like that. But if you were to, it, it tastes almost like a, like a fruity A1 sauce, is what I would say. Um, and like I said, there's no, no high fructose corn syrup, there's no um, extra sodium, you know. So I really like it. And you can get it, it's right there where, where all the A1 and the uh, Worcestershire sauce, it's right with all that. It's usually just one little thing, and I gloss over it until I, like I said, I went to that party. I was like, oh, wow. So I always add this in here. Now, what about hoisin sauce? What? Hoisin sauce? Hoisin sauce? Yeah, it's um, probably has, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to guess if you buy a brand name, it's going to have high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. Um, but if you, you know, if you probably buy a, a locally made brand or maybe a specific brand from China or something, you might find one without it, but uh, I'm not too familiar with it, yeah. you know. But do you make it, or are you just interested in it? Yeah, I'm not. I think it was supposed to be Asian, the cuisine sauce. Yeah. I had never really thought of using it, okay. but at one point, Stop and Shop had the bags with everything, the pre-made. Oh, meal, yeah, and, sure, yeah. You know, that was one of the things that they were oh, using right. for, and I don't remember if it was a chicken dish or. A oh, okay. Dish, yeah. Uh, but it was yeah, I don't cook with. You know what? Maybe I. Maybe I should. I probably I should. I a Chinese version of ketchup. Oh, okay. And All so, right. You know. Hey, hey, green tea is like their uh, yeah. their version of a uh, coffee for us. You know, so. Um, I, whenever I make stuff, I make big batches, um, well, use, because I make for a lot of people when I do these, but also I like to freeze a lot of stuff. So I just get these paper soup containers. You can get them on Amazon. And what's really good about that is if you are somebody like me who I'm single and I don't plan well at all, and I'll come home and have left my thing of soup in the freezer and I don't want to wait to defrost it, so I take it out and I just peel the cardboard right off of it. And then I have a big block of soup, and I just put it for it, and I just slowly simmer it in the in the pot. So um, here's the better than bullion that we were talking about. You know, this is uh, yeah, this stuff is great. It I, I can't say enough about this. Um, you had a little bit in your chili today, not a lot, just a little bit. Um, again, it's loaded with sodium, so I use one fourth what they call for. You know, I see you nodding your head. Yeah, that it's. Yeah, if, if you did what they said, I mean, you'd be like, oh, God. Um, but it's, um, if, you, if you use it, you know, I, like I said, I use about a teaspoon or a tablespoon, depending, for about every four cups. Um, they have a ton of different varieties, tons, and they do have some low-sodium varieties. Um, but, you know, how, how much lower sodium, you know, who knows? It's easier to just use less of it, I think. And they have some great fish ones, lobster ones, the whole thing. As far as block stock, um, about two weeks ago, I would have told you this is the only one that I use, and I love this one, and this one's still my favorite, the Kitchen Basics Unsalted. 
Um, it is by far the best box chicken stock that I found. That it is. I it, it right. It is absolutely. They were a, they were a small outfit, and then McCormick Spices bought them out, and um, they've kept it. It seems they've kept it the quality there. But there's a really close runner-up nipping at their heels. I was in Costco, and their cost, their Kirkland brand is excellent. Um, you know, and it's right around the same with five grams of protein, the same amount of sodium. Um, so that's a really good, if, you, if you're a Costco member, that's a really good one. I think I've mentioned this before. I always use the diced, I mean the uh, minced garlic, right? So much easier. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, just kind of some quick final thoughts. Um, he's, he had to run out and do an errand for me, but that's our latest. That's his title. I've, I've given him the title latest because he... I bring him with me, and he actually does a lot more. He sets the room up and breaks it down and cleans up at the end, but he also uh, serves the food. And um, Zachary, I'll, since he's not here, I'll, I'll, he is, he's 24 years old, about to have a new baby, him and his girlfriend. Um, and he has just started getting into cooking um, because when I met him, he was one of those young people that was eating like... Uh, chicken nuggets all day and frozen pizzas and all that and little by little I've been able to influence him so he actually was so excited he made that chili about a week ago and he brought it to me he's like try it try it I was like I wouldn't know the difference um, and then of course you know I think you guys already know this joke so because I did this one before right my book did I do this one no maybe not so we wrote a book of recipes and I you know yeah I did this one right yeah no one's gonna laugh I shouldn't say that about Julia. You know, I, you, I love Julia Child. You guys know that, right? Did anyone watch that series? The Julia Child, it's on HBO. It was fantastic. Uh, that, I actually was, as I was watching it, you know, she, she lived in Cambridge, and they had a scene where there was a, um, a butcher shop called Savinor's, I think. And I was like, I just happened to have my phone with me. I was, I was like, you know, I wonder if that's still around. It's still there. And uh, I'm actually, I'm driving into Brookline today. I might try and swing over there and see it because um, it's kind of cool, you know. Plus, they have ground venison. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, today. Yeah, good. So, just if, uh, if you want, like I said, if you want the recipes, you can either see me, you can see Mary. Um, just leave your trash and I'll, I'll come around and pick it up. And I'll be back um, hopefully next month. I don't know what we're doing, but I'll be in touch. All right, you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thanks.